Y'all know what it is. Go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And get ready to type because I need your comments for this one. Mm. Well. What up? What it do, how it do, when it do, what it do, how it do, when it do, what it do. How y'all doing? Matter of fact, let me go, let me go let me go get some cards. We're gonna let the cards help me speak on this topic topic. <clears throat> so I'm about to piss you motherfuckers off. And I intend to do so. The intention is real. However, beyond that intention is the larger intention to educate, enlighten, and open the minds of the masses. Cause really I'm tired of all y'all. Y'all get on my nerves. And that's not to say that I don't also get on my nerves sometimes too, because I do. But uh, I don't want that deck, and I don't want that deck. What deck do I want? Ooh, yes, that's the deck I want. All right, all right, I hear you. Hold on. Let me, let me do the presentation real quick. Bump the bump me in my toe. Let me get clean. I mean, I just took that shower and everything. Clean third eye and all that good stuff. All right. Y'all stop uh, dropping glass on the foot now. Appreciate shop. <laughs> so, let me go get this dead. So when I sit down to talk my shit, I can speak it of the shit in proper form. Huh. We about to talk that shit. Talk that shit, talk that shit, talk that shit, talk that shit. What y'all watching? So meantime, in between time, while I get ready to talk about the main topic of this video, I got a question that I want to put out here for y'all. What the hell? What the hell are you watching? I put the Taco Bell saying, oh, all right. Okay. Oh, hold on. Where my dick at? Where is my dick? Anyway, I want to pose this question to y'all. Angels. Are we supposed to pray to them? <clears throat> I asked this question. <clears throat> So I just feel y'all. Okay. I tripped over something and I feel. Thank God for the beanbag apps. Because it caught me. And it was a pleasant fall. Anywho. What I asked y'all? Oh yeah, I asked y'all about the angels. Is we supposed to pray to him? Hmm? I ask this question because, once again, and she will probably always get this. So, look, I am telling all you spiritual workers they may not have the best of passes, okay? <clears throat> there will be people who will always remember you from your past and bring it up. And there will be those who will remember you from your past and they not only will bring it up, they will try to keep you in that place. Okay? So what y'all need to do is own your past. Therefore, when people do that shit to you, instead of you becoming triggered, bothered, hurt by it, because I mean, how you gonna be hurt by the shit you did? Instead of being, whoa. What in the bullshit three hell is going on? Where's my deck? And there. 
are my Tylenol. I've been looking for them. Of course I find them when I don't need them. Um, and that brought me to the point I'm actually trying to make. I bet y'all like, bitch, hurry up. So, um, I came across another video talking about Doreen, Dorian, however you say her name, Virtue. Y'all know that lady that created all them terror decks? Her. I came across a another thread about her. This is years later after she has denounced the new age and all of this shit. And said that her cause is evil and she wish people quit selling them and all this. Dory, if you happen to come across this video and you're newly sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost spirits or able to listen to my message because I indeed do have a potty mouth, then this is my suggestion to you. And it's going to hurt and it's going to suck. If you want these people to stop buying your decks, you should pay them the money that they spent to acquire those decks to sell them because they bought those decks to sell for a profit and just because your beliefs have changed does not mean that there are people out there who still do not appreciate the work that you put in and those decks will probably continue to sell at the end of time of course darling even if you do give these people that money the good book says that the love of money is the root to all evil so though you would have made them whole some people will still decide that their greed is more important and continue to capitalize off of your previous work ma'am that's the best solution for you otherwise you can just hang it up, man. But anywho, enough about her. Well, enough of my bitches. Back to my topic, my semi-topic. The topic I want to talk about, I want a particular dick to speak on it. And I have to find it. Because it is not where I last remember placing it. Which really perturbs me. I don't like when my things go missing it bothers me it makes me crazy anyway so that video came up and I went over to her website to once again refresh my memory about what she had to say about everything when it went down I watched her video but it was so long ago, I forgot. So, I went back over there to see what I could see. And she not only did a video, she wrote a letter. And basically, she said that the angels depicted in her deck are actually the money spirits that deceived her. Okay. Look. If that's her belief, that's her belief. However, you got to deal with the consequences of your actions. They never go away. That's why the shadow work is important. Um, I don't know what she's doing right now. I don't think she's harping on this. I think, you know, people just come into newfound information where they think it's new, but it's actually old. Because I really haven't seen anything from her in a while so but I don't follow her up like that either so I really don't know so if y'all know you know drop it in the comments I'll be glad to read about it and talk with y'all about it or whatever but anywho so that made me think because in hoodoo we do petition angels to help us and I saw a lot of different scriptures and interpretations that said it is not right to call upon the angels. But this is what I found interesting. 
if you go into the Bible, and I'll probably put these scriptures in the uh, description box because I don't um, really, I don't know them by heart. But if you go into the Bible, there are bits and pieces of the Bible that will um, insinuate or state that you do not worship the angels, right? And a lot of people, they say that you should not um, pray to the angels, consider prayer as a form of worship. Which prayer can be a form of worship. And if you go over to Revelation, when John tries to worship, I believe it was one of the seven angels. Oh, snap. Let me find out that this is the deck I'm supposed to use, even though I wanted the other one. But we're going to find out, because I'm supposed to keep digging. Y'all, <laughs> it's time to elevate. And I need y'all to stop sleeping on me and wake up and come over here and get this good wisdom. That's going to improve your life because I know it's some people that follow me. And there is greatness laid out in y'all cards. Y'all sitting over here playing with your destiny, baby. And I'm sent here to help you reach that motherfucker. And y'all want to sleep on me because I ain't around here looking like a movie star. I'm going to need y'all to cut it out. Come get, come get what you need so you can go be with your guy. You understand? Anyway, I guess that is the dick that I'm supposed to use because I don't even understand why this dick is missing right now. But anywho, we're going to take this. And I'm going back and getting my bed so I can be comfortable. <laughs> but, uh, she, I was reading it, so the angel will not accept her worship. So, um, I've been watching American Guys, right? And, I've learned a thing about worship and prayer by watching this. And I learned this from the character named Belfast. Unfortunately, the rest of her story was not told because the season got canceled. So, I didn't get to see her story, but the little bit I did, I did get a word from it. Okay, so Belquist would was a man eater, for lack of a better term. Not lack of a better term. I'm just too damn lazy to search my mind for it. She was a man eater, and one thing where she ate this man. She told him to worship her. And while he he said he didn't know how. But he started speaking. And when he started speaking, he started saying things that we would consider to stroke the ego, right? So, he's worshiping her. And then he'll put go ahead and consume his ass. So, do I equate, the question became, do I equate um, it's coming y'all, give me a second. Do I equate prayer with worship? Not always. It's setting out to pray can sometimes turn 
to worship. However, I do believe that if you have the knowledge and the cognitive reasoning that the most high is the most high and the angels are the angels and angels are messengers aka pages pick up the jewel um they are messengers and they are helpers then once you begin to go into worship because the spirit has mounted upon you you will give your worship to the proper place I don't think the spirit will mount you and you worship a being that is not to be worshipped you know what I'm saying that's what I'm saying so my question is to y'all is what y'all think like do y'all think angels should be called upon and prayed to because if they are helpers while there are scriptures that say you should not worship the angels or whatever and there are people that interpret prayer and worship as the same thing <sighs> there are instances in the bible where angels were called upon and if you call for help and the angel comes and you speak to the angel with your request that that is also a form of prayer because prayer is nothing but a verbal petition and you are giving this prayer to this angel. So that is that is prayer. You know, you're giving your request to the angel. That's a prayer. And then, when you do, close your eyes to say your prayer and send them to the Most High. If you go back over there to Revelation, it describes what happens. There is angels that are around incense, gathering up your prayers to take them to the Most High. So, the angels are going to get your prayers anyway. And if you look at the Catholic religion, and you look at some of these other religions, there are beings that are there to help you. Even the different pantheons. The pantheons are gods, but they are not the most high gods. So in my mind, I equate them all to be on the same level as angels. That's how it works for me. So I equate them all to be on the same level as angels. They are beings that are put here to help us. As so, even with the Orisha. Okay? So they are beings that are put here to help mankind. And if you make a request, that is a prayer. So I don't think it's wrong to pray to angels i do think it's wrong to worship anything outside of the most high so if you are you know subject to fall down at the feet of the angel and express how wonderful and glorious it is and all of that one most of them are not gonna take it and and two you you, you should know better and if you don't know better, then consider this video your your education so that you do now know better. Right? Because that's just what I was thinking. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know what y'all think about upon the subjects. Alright? So now let's get to the topic in hand, baby. We about to get into this. Let's talk about leaving the church. And we're going to shout out Uncle Shug because don't look at my dirty room. See? <laughs> uh, we're going to shout out Uncle Shug for this because um, I was watching his live stream today and um, I don't know if this person was being funny or whatever but Somebody came in talking about the love of God and y'all don't act like God's children and all that type of shit. I don't know what they was trolling with. But I don't know if y'all know. But motherfuckers be on YouTube acting a goddamn fool. They just act a whole ass all the time for no reason. I don't even understand why folks act like this. This shit is crazy. I ain't never, this, this, I'm talking about if you ever wanted to see dysfunction, oh baby, you can get it on YouTube. 
these people ask a damn fool, okay? So, um, that's why I said I don't know whether this person was trolling or not. They said something about uh, going to church and expressing agape and all of that type of shit because of the way people act on YouTube. Um, so, inside of that, he gave his feel on why, you know what I'm saying, he fucks with the church. And I kind of agree with him because let's let's just fucking get into it. Let's just tell the real deal, holy fear, real nigga truth. First and foremost, them churches do more for the black community than the black community want to do for the black community. Let's start with that, okay? Um, people go in there and they pay their tithes, and I know uh, the the going criticism is that oh, you pay your tithes, and that pastor sitting up there rich and and all of this shit here. Yes, the pastor might be sitting up there rich. Uh, hopefully the pastor is rich because God blessed him to be that way. Not because he is uh, being greedy and letting his greed consume him. Because if his greed is consuming him, I guarantee you that when he goes be in to, to, the, to the hall of my yacht to have that heart weighed against that feather, it will not be light. Okay, <laughs> we don't be lights enough. Okay, and uh, whoa, greater is the destruction for people in that particular position that abuse their power. Now, down here on this earth, everybody wants their earthly gains, and by all means, I'm not telling y'all y'all gotta walk the path to Jesus and not have a house and be homeless, and I'm not saying it, but. Like I said, the word says, for the love of money, and it's not even just the love of money. Come on, let's delve into it. The love of money, it is not the love of money, it's the love of things that money can bring you, okay? Because, and that's why people want money. But, but for the love of money is the roots. Y'all know we stay working on, on them damn root chakra issues because... The root chakra issues will keep you bound and not able to reach your destiny. Can I get a eye right, shake? <laughs> okay, so the roots of evil is the love of money. Okay, but those churches, and I know what the churches do. Now, I don't particularly fuck around with the church that I grew up in for several reasons. You know, and maybe one day I'll do a video on it, especially if y'all come in and ask me for it. I'll do it for y'all. Um, but I do know this. That church feeds a lot of people. That church clothes a lot of people. That church, matter of fact, the church was in the news for um, passing out air conditioners. Now, they had a rich donor that helps them, you know, procure these air conditioners or whatever, but helps get air conditioners for people who can't afford them in the summertime because it's fucking hot in Texas, okay? People die in Texas when the summer come around because it's so damn hot. So, this church does that. Now, all you good spiritual folk with all these good spiritual circles and all of this shit, I want to know how many people y'all feed on a monthly basis. We just going to go monthly because I know the church that I grew up in, they feeding people every day. So, how many of these spiritual circles and these spiritual groups is out here feeding the impoverished in their community. Hmm? How many of y'all sister circles is going out here making sure that um, people that don't have a way to bathe have a way to wash their hair? Because see, the church that I grew up in, and it started out as a very small church. Hmm? Uh... They provide places to stay. Um, they educate children because they have a school now. 
when when I'm not gonna even say when when I started going to the church because I I was born in that church. Um, when my mother started going to that church, that church was inside of somebody's house that they used to rent. They eventually got the building that I knew that we was in when I was um, growing up in the church. And it was literally a building that consisted of one room, the pastor's office, a computer room that also served as the, uh, the accounting office, a kitchen, a small room for a daycare, which all the toddlers and the babies could go in, and two bathrooms. Small building. Now they've gotten a bigger building. I haven't really been in there to see that. I don't really know what all it looks like in there. You know, I've seen a little bit of it, but I haven't seen most of it. You know, I don't necessarily feel at home when I go there anymore. And so I don't just go probing around nobody house. So, uh, you know, I feel like a cousin, you know. That you don't see out there. You don't just go rolling around. Even though that's family, you don't go rolling around. That's how I feel when I go in there. So I ain't really look at it. But it has grown. But they do do a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Now, you may not like the indoctrination of the church. And like I said, I'm an equal opportunity motherfucking headbuster. If I can talk about these religious folks and these Christians and how they treat people that uh, find. Um, their ultimate expression of God in the occult, then I can talk about you occultists and how y'all talk shit about these religious people and these Christians. Because y'all fucking out of line. Because I have yet to see any occult circle or anything that is doing anything equivalent to what these churches are doing. What I have seen is the occult become a straight up and down motherfucking marketplace for all kinds of shit. Okay. That's what I've seen. I've seen people try to get rich. About this. I have seen people treat people with the utmost disdain. Because of this. And I'm trying to see like. Okay. If the church is so bad. Then what the fuck makes you occult is so great. Is what I want to know. Because I don't see a whole lot of humanity going on and i am gonna give it a um um benefit of the doubt the folks are just now moving into this uh-huh and it's gonna take some time to build but until you can build you need to shut the fuck up because there are a lot of people who will go without electricity it will be a lot of people that will lose their homes. It's a lot of people whose children will not eat if it is not for these churches. And see, the thing about the church is they have a tax exempt status for a reason. Because they are essentially the humanitarians of the community. You know what I'm saying? They have an obligation to do so much. They have to do that. You know? In order to get their tax exempt status because they're supposed to help them do the things that they do. You know what I'm saying? So, if you not finna go out there and do that, and if you don't have the means to take up their charge, then how the fuck you gonna sit up here and talk shit about a doctrine when... What is the action, though? Because the one pastor being rich, and the few people that couldn't get help from the church because they have to... Cause the church can't help everybody. Hell, it'll go broke. But, what is those few that weren't able to get help through the church at this one particular time versus the many that did? What is that? What are the numbers on that? Did you look into that or did you just say, oh, he got a Ferrari and he grown? So, because there are people inside of his church that are still living under the poverty line. Um, does that mean he has to also live up under the poverty line? Is that what y'all think? I want to know. Go ahead. Drop the science. 
Drop the knowledge. Drop the wisdom. Because I'm here to listen. And I'm here to understand. Because right now I feel like y'all ain't really got a leg to stand on when it comes to this. Now when it comes to spiritual cultivation, there will be some people that can get what they need out of the church. There will, some, there will be some people that is just not. For me, it was not. It never was. Like, I enjoyed the worship. I understood the message. I appreciated it. It always felt like something was missing. When I got grown and got on my own, I went exploring. I explored several different religions, which leads me to where I am now. Never feel bad about your journey. And don't let nobody else tell you you wrong for your journey. Okay? Don't do it. Because your journey is your journey. And your journey will help shape you to your ultimate destiny. But, I just want to know. When he said those things, I was like, that shit is true. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and though I was not able to articulate it without that spark, that is one of the reasons why I'm not running around here talking about, shut the churches down. Because, no, churches are very beneficial to the black community. You know what I'm saying? And churches really need to calm down on talking shit about the occultism because everything we do in the occult is found in that Bible. It's just the doctrine is so strong. And the the ignoring of doctrine is so fucking crazy that I hate having to shuffle my cards this way. But these cards are so big, I can't grip them. And they, they slippery. I might laminate these motherfuckers. But, um, the doctrine is so strong that, you know, people can't really see shit. You know, because the church was born out of hoodoo, baby. Because we were still tied to our African roots when we came over here. And,. African roots is very steep in spirituality and magic and the occult and things of that nature. And so you don't get get you don't get the black church without getting hoodoo first. And so really this shit needs to stop. Now I'm not saying you sit up there and let somebody run up in your church talking about I am the baddest witch in the east or, or some shit like that. That's ignorant as hell. No, we don't do that. You know, matter of fact, I don't know very many root workers that call themselves witches. The ones that I do know call themselves new, uh, witches. This some new age ass shit. You know what I'm saying? I even know that there are some people that practice some Eastern and African religions and they also call themselves witches. That's not what they do. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. I think I'm doing shuffling this because it's starting to get on my nerves. So, we gonna see what spirit has to say. I'm gonna just do a simple three card, okay? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a simple three card and we're going to see what Spirit got to say about this. In the past, we come in with the 20, which is the judgment card. We talking about Pluto, baby. Fucking some shit up. Okay? Some needed to change. What is the scripture that go with this? Where my little book at? Mm-hmm. Because this her book, this her, uh, that come with a little book and it got scriptures in it. So, we talking about judgment. Judgment is Pluto. Pluto come in and clean up the mess after everything done been cleaned up. And that's coming in the past position. So, um, and it's also a change in position. So, a change in position is what, what basically go bring us to whatever the situation at hand is and we'll, we'll see what that is when I, uh, turn that card over for the prison. But, it says Matthew 18 and 31. So, we're going to go over here to Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. 
seven seconds for me to your galatians and ephesians it's one of them churches i learned in sunday school some of that stuff still is still sweet okay you say 18 and 31. so i really got to play with this deck a little bit more because some of these scriptures is not complete i'm not sure what bible he was using the artist for this particular deck um is Italian. I know they tend to be Christian. It says, Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. So what the hell is going on? Talking about an unforgiving servant. Is y'all listening? It says, this thing, so let me show y'all this part. Let me see if I can get some light in here. Sun going down, so getting a little dark. Let me see if I can get some light in here. So we got a man and a woman, a child, and a bunch of people, and it looks like a dove at the top raining down lightning. Lightning, yeah, lightning is all about judgment. Lightning comes from the war guys and all that type of stuff. So it says, the scene refers to Jesus' words that invites us to become as little children to enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is truly an inner rebirth that does not come from the study of books. Because despite how much one may study, one will always remain ignorant of the immensity of the, immensity of the universe and of the many mysteries hidden in its folds. Only by rediscovering your original innocence will you open up the doors to be birthed. Okay, so you can't be reborn by throwing away your past. I done told y'all that you, if you grew up in the church or any religion, you need not throw your religion away. What you need to do is figure out how your religion ties into your current journey. Because you, you ain't nothing in your life happened to you without you going, uh, ain't nothing in your life happened to you that was not preparing you for the next stage in your journey or your elevation if you are indeed elevated some people don't fucking elevate because they don't learn the lessons and they don't pay attention to shit what it says is better yourself free yourself from co cultural superstructures that have been imposed on you with deep meditation clean up your mind from any form of psychological conditioning clarify your goals every morning when you wake up and examine your consciousness every evening before going to sleep you may feel remorse for any wrongdoings you have doubts or regrets but the most important thing is that you become aware of how a problem arose in the first place and how you came to make mistakes okay positive meaning and we're going positive because it was upright is liberation rebirth positive change awakening soul Clarifications, advert, advertising, notoriety, intense, social relations, healing, recovery, and recovery of energy. So, it's not wrong to be on a different path, but understand where it came from, okay? Now, going over here to the, uh, ooh, present situation, baby, this is ugly. This is ugly, ugly. Baby, this is the Ten of Swords. <clears throat> mm. Y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Ten of swords. Interesting thing about this ten of swords, first thing I noticed is that it's water running through there. So there is some form of life here, though there be um uh, what looks like poverty and this man sitting over there taking pictures of the poverty. And a lot of times when you see stuff like this, you, you wonder like why aren't you stopping to help? But what is he gonna help and how is he gonna help because nine times out of ten he is uh trying to keep his head above water too especially in this american society so you can look at people and say what they should and they should not do with their money but like i said you got all this stuff going on at the church and the things that the church do and the amount of people that the church deals with you know it is very backstabbing. Ten of Swords. It's very backstabbing of, 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 of people 
who were once part of the church to turn around and just act like nothing good comes from the church. Just because you chose to walk away from something don't mean that you need to demonize it or you even have the right to demonize it, okay? So it says this card is inspired by the massacre of the innocents. Mm. Invoking the pain and affliction to which many children are subject to all over the world. It is not just the death by malnutrition, but also the abuse that children endure, even to the point of becoming simple statistics or newsreel images, or even being the object of speculation by fake charity. The bleakness brought about this image must take you must make you reflect of the ways you can help relieve the suffering of children throughout the world. But just look around you and you will see that there is a lot you can do right on your doorstep. Just try to put yourself into others' pain and by listening to your heart, you will know how to act. This card speaks of sadness, desolation, tears, deep emotion for family or social problems, Pains that come and go, slow to recover energy. These are the things that the church actually help with. How many of you motherfuckers is out here? And I'm seeing a common theme here. If you see the common theme, put it in the comments. Cause I want to see if anybody see what I see. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. When I said I was gonna piss y'all off, I mean it. But before we go over there, I need to pull the scripture. This says Matthew. Two and one. So we're gonna go over here to Matthew and we're gonna go to verse chapter two, verse one. All right, chapter two, verse one says, Ooh! Visit of the Magi. Mm, mm, mm. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem. Let's continue on. Saying, Where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at his rising, and we have come to do him homage. Once again, spiritual community, until you are able to sustain what the church does, shut the fuck up about closing the church. This shit say it's up. I'm telling you, spirit speaking. Let's go on over here to this last part. This is the future part. Maybe we're looking at poverty. Okay? This is the five of pentacles. Okay? This is that earth card. We got everything out here. Actually, we got a planet. We got air. And we got earth. This ain't nothing but dust. Combine air and dust with an air of change. Pseudo. I believe Pluto is very icy, and I think Pluto is, uh, I think Pluto was associated with air or earth. I don't know. I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to get back with y'all on it. I can't remember what element Pluto is associated with, but, uh, hold on. Do I got some? Hey, what are you cheering? Come here. I need y'all to do something for me. Um, but yeah, we talking about the five of pentacles, okay? Five of pentacles talk about codependency. It talks about being stagnant and not moving, utilizing somebody as a crutch because somebody don't want to let somebody go. Y'all see the card? <laughs> Let's see what this book got to say. About these here pentacles. Hey, I need somebody to do me a favor. Like, good lord. And other time they want to race each other. Now they don't want to help. They want to help me out. All right. So this says, how can a person live peacefully if he or she has to use any trickery and dishonesty to deceitfully defraud the neighbors. Even these actions, albeit small, will 
become a burden on one's conscience. In general, this figure represents a fraud done or suffered or even simply at an attempt to scam. Be careful not to be cheated. But do not follow the example of a fraudster or a con man. If you deceive others, you deceive yourself. Show to those who have deceived you that you are aware of this, but not hold grudges toward them. Simply be compassionate of his grief. As far as speaks of distraction, disorder, negligence, apprehension, suspiciousness, disturbance of any kind, and legal issues. And the scriptures in Amos. So I believe that the book of Amos is in the Old Testament. Let's see. Uh, that's his name. It's just a pretty official to the people. I want to see the book. Let me see if we're ready. I keep it here. I had a phrase out there. Let's see. Let's see. Let me, let me find it, y'all. Amos is not a book I am terribly familiar with, and this is also a Catholic Bible, which is something else I'm not terribly familiar with. So, give me a second. I believe Amos is closer to the end of the New Testament. If I can't. Whoa. Really? Bro, the Catholics got a book called Wisdom in their Bible. Then they got another book called Wisdom of Being Sarah. Sarah? I don't know. I, I've never heard of this. Coming, y'all. Oh, they got a lot of books in here. I ain't never seen. Mm, we might start a Bible study real soon, y'all, because I'm interested in these books. Look at these books. There we go. Amos. I thought he was close to the end testament. Eight and six. I don't know what that FF means behind that note. I mean, that scripture. Chapter 8, verse 6. Okay, chapter 8 says, um, fourth vision, the summer fruit. And it says, verse 6, it says, we buy the destitute for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. And even the worthless grain we will sell. What did I say to y'all before I got into the topic of this? For the love of money is the root to all evil. And though that scripture did not come up in these parts, I think it is very evident by everything that I have read and showed to y'all that spirit is telling your ass that for y'all to be sitting up here talking about closing these doors, one, you don't give a fuck about the children, okay? Because we got two cars that are sitting up here specifically geared toward children, especially with the scripture that they brought. Specifically talking about the children and the condition of children and the abuse of children. How many of these spirits out here doing anything for children? Let me tell y'all something. I was getting ready to put a retreat together. And I said the children, I wanted the children to come on the retreat because one, I don't know how y'all running up to spirituality and claiming that this is this is how you see God. This is how you believe in God. And you not passing this on to your children. It don't make no sense. If that's really how you see the most high and it's not some faddish thing why are you not passing this knowledge on to your children a lot of us that actually do our shadow work get into the work learn how to commune with our ancestors one of our biggest complaints is our ancestors and the generations before us did not pass this stuff down to us and here we are now knowing this when you know better you're supposed to do better so we know this and we are not doing it and this card is really sitting up here talking about these children like this and then it says to do something less is to defraud okay hold on let me get another bit since, since my babies won't come help me they got food down there that's why they ain't coming to help me 
It's fine. I'll be good. I'll be good. I can handle these. I need, I need this, uh, <clears throat> okay, you got this Pluto associated with Saturn, and it's moving between, I thought, I thought it was Pluto, oh, okay, so I think, is Pluto the higher outfit for Saturn? It might be. But they got it down here at Saturn. And then we got, what is this? The Ten of Swords. Come on, I know you on here. You see the infinity. Dang, it's not here. Okay, what's the other one? The five. Let's do the numerology. So that's 20, 30, 35, 35 is an eight. Scorpio energy, death and regeneration. If y'all want to regenerate, I'm telling you what you got to do. Y'all need to do what the church doing and some. You can't sit up here and try to take away some shit. That's robbery. It's fucking robbery. Y'all want to sit up here and pass out pockets. A lot of y'all are here, and I mean, y'all ain't being honest. I'm going to tell you one thing. I'll get up here and I will bitch at about money from time to time because I still got to eat too. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm not trying to do is get rich off of you motherfuckers. I'm not trying to do that shit. You know, that's not my goal. I really do enjoy helping people and I want to help people. But that don't mean I want to be destitute trying to help somebody. It don't make no damn sense. But, uh... Okay, we got... It look like Tyrus in the moon. Tyrus in the moon go hand in hand. This is the five of pentacles. Between two and two thirty. So if that's where it is. Okay, so let me look back over here. What I said there was the ten of swords. That's a heavy ass card right there. And that's our present. The ten of swords. Y'all not being right. Y'all not being right. This one just don't have it on here. So I can't remember the uh planet planet that goes with uh the ten of swords right now. But I do know this. That is also a rebirth. You got rebirth just keep coming up. You got children keep coming up. And if the occult community is gonna really rebirth this into a more spiritual accepted concept. Then the spiritual community need to do more for the humanity community, okay? The community of humanity. They, the, the spiritual community needs to become more humane. Because right now, it ain't looking good for the home team. These, these don't look good, bro. These don't look good. They don't give good messages neither. They give good messages. Y'all just... I told y'all I was going to piss y'all off because y'all was about to get this ass whooping. Y'all going to get this ass whooping. But anyway, we talked about a lot in this video. I've been talking for a whole hour. Y'all know they didn't even like me. Okay, but I mean, the spirit said get a word. So we got to get a word. Hmm. So, um, those of you that made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. And if you go ahead and leave a comment like the video, um, those of you that made it to the end of this video, um, I'll put y'all in a raffle for me to send y'all some free shit. Because I be over here doing the do. I don't put everything up on the website because I do everything by myself. Okay? So, I don't always have everything up. But I got a lot of stuff over here. I got candles over here. I have waters over here. All of that type of stuff. I got sage. I have jewelry that I make. I make stuff. Now, um, once I get to like 
once I get enough subscribers to where I can go live um, from my cell phone, then I will put up a raffle for a staff. Because y'all know I make staff. So, I put y'all up a raffle for a staff. But right now, just, you know, I just send y'all some of the products that I have, some of the stuff that I make. If I get enough people that put some comments down. Because, I mean, I feel like this is a good topic. We talked about angels and whether or not you should pray to them. And we talked about what's going on in the spiritual community and some other stuff that I had talked about that I can't remember right now. You know what I'm saying? But I sure appreciate y'all for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all stay dark and lovely while spreading your love and light. And I will see you guys next video.